Let's begin with a word of prayer and we'll move right along into today's lesson. We thank you, Lord, for this time we have to learn and grow. We seek to do the best we can and add to what we know. We love you, God, with all our hearts and to others' love we show. Pleasing you is our goal, not to our lesson we should go. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, Mrs. Theta here with Heroes for Art Homeschool Academy. Welcome to another lesson in our Bible reading class. Today, we are uh, talking about the teachings of the Lord, and we started this last week. Today, we're going to be talking about the Sermon on the Mount. And we've been talking about Sermon on the Mount, and all of our teachings that the Lord gives us will be coming from the Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew 5 through 7. Uh, today's uh, title, our topic, is the fulfillment of the law. So if you're ready... Also, don't forget to do the uh, vocabulary search if you if you have a workbook, you can do that now. This is called the fulfillment of the law. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, Anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless you, your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Murder. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with their brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who has taken you to court. Do it while you are still together and on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Adultery. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully, or a man, has already committed adultery with him or her in their heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away, it is better for you to enter into... It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Okay. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, if you're right hand, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Love for enemies. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. It's great, right? So the Lord gives us um, a rule bit, rule book by which to follow. He redefine. He helps us to better define murder, adultery, love versus hate. He helps us to bring. He brings a lot of clarity to that. Clarity to that. Also, about the um, cutting off your hand, plucking out your eye, these are what we call hyperboles. 
Hyperboles are exaggerated statements, statements that are not meant to be taken literally, but that should get you to think. Okay, so you should be able to think about how the sincerity of his words when you um, recognize what he's telling you to do, what he's suggesting could be done in order to keep you out of sin. Boys and girls, please complete the bottom right-hand corner of your workbook, the review section. It'll be of, I think, tremendous help to review. Until next time, remember, Jesus loves you. Indeed, he does, as do we. God bless. I'll be your hero's body, and as you study with heroes born, I will be your friend. So don't you worry.